So this is me on the beach playing around with what I refer to as sound sensitive light clamps. They're designed to close immediately when scared by loud noises. When one clamp closes, the sound of it makes all the other ones close as well, making them act like a swarm. Hi, I'm Christopher and welcome to the lab. So about eight months ago, I was watching this documentary describing the hunting techniques of sea animals. And in it, I noticed a particular fight between a uh, starfish and a clam. And as the starfish attacked the clam, the clam re reacted by retracting back into its shell with such a force that it actually both uh, created a jet of water that scared off the starfish as well as moved the clam at least 20 centimeters from the scene of the crime. And as I'm sure you know, retracting back into some kind of armor is a common defense technique in nature. You see it all over the animal kingdom from animals such as armadillos to turtles and clams, of course. But anyway, I thought it was super cool and I thought it would make for a great project. So I started designing my own retractive clams. So in order to get an idea of what the clam should look like, I fired up Blender and I goofed around till I had something that I really liked. It obviously had to resemble a clam, but it also had to contain electronics and some sort of linear actuation that would allow the top shell to close quickly and then pop up to its original position. I had a strong feeling that I would spare myself a lot of headache if I kept the clamps on the ground. But I could not help myself from making a rendering that I guess somewhat shows what it would look like to have them mounted in a tree. Maybe that's something for a Light Clamps Project 2.0. Now I threw what I had learned from Blender into a CAD program and started modeling. For this to even remotely appear as a swarm, I had to make at least 20 units and therefore they had to be cheap, they had to be easy to produce and hopefully it wouldn't involve too much of my time operating some machine. To achieve this, my design consists of a top plastic shell, a solenoid, a white PCB and a 3D printed base. The shells are spray painted black on the outside, but painted with a reflective material on the inside. This is so that light from the LEDs on the PCB will be reflected out of the shell, forming a nice even halo around each clamp. Now I began designing the PCBs and I had them made by a manufacturer in China. They are in fact not very complicated, but I just could not decide what sensors to put in the clamps. So I ended up making at least four different versions before finally settling on a radar and a sound sensor. Since everything had to be relatively small for this project, I also needed a small chip to control each clamp. For that I went with a popular ATtiny85, and I must say it's just totally insane how much processing power you can get out of one of these bad boys. Alright, here we have it, the finished PCB. And I'll just briefly go through what's on there. On the top part, we have all the LEDs. On the bottom, we have a radar sensor, a microcontroller, two MOSFETs, and a sound module. And the sound module is what allows the clamps to communicate amongst each other, as well as react when people are around. The whole thing is milled in such a way that it fits very snugly into the 3D printed base. So when it came to choosing the right kind of actuator for this project, I had several potential options. First, I thought of using one of these micro servos and attaching a piston mechanism on it. This would be cheap and it would allow for a pretty fine resolution of the motion. However, I thought it would be difficult to construct symmetrically around it, so it was scrapped. Then I thought why not use one of these geared linear actuator motors. It has the same benefits in the sense that it allows for a very fine and very controlled motion. 
However, it was just proven to move too slowly and be too weak, so it had to be scrapped as well. Then it hit me. Why not just use a solenoid? It might just be the most primitive of all the different kinds of actuators. It basically consists of an electromagnet, a compression spring and a steel rod. As the magnet gets energized, it overcomes the tension of the compression spring, resulting in the rod being pushed forward. When the magnet gets turned off, the spring directs the rod back to its original position. Assembling the clamps is surprisingly easy. First you take the PCB and put it in the 3D printed base. Then it helps to curl up the wires of the solenoid before mounting it in the base as well. When this is done, you just press fit the top shell onto the rod of the solenoid. So here we have them, all finished. And since the clamps react to sounds, I have multiple ways of interacting with them. I can just make a noise, I can clap, I can even hit one, and this should propagate through the other ones. Also, I suspect that they will probably somewhat communicate amongst each other, but I think I'll just turn them on and we can have a look for, for ourselves. So now they should blink twice to confirm that they are actually on. Hello! And as I make a noise, they close immediately. So this works, this works, really works. And as you can see now, they react to one another. And now if I'm trying to be completely quiet now, maybe we can have them all pop. Yes, they work, they totally work, <laughs> yes. I finished all 22 clamps and I found a great location for them to be put into the wild. I charged the batteries and I packed what I needed to fix any of the clamps if any broke while filming. This is what it looked like. Thank you. 